today, just making sure that our audio is working okay. Had a little bit of a change up yesterday, so <clears throat> that should be that should be about right. All right, so let me know if you can hear me okay. Want to make sure that the audio is on point. And we're going to get going. We're talking about YouTube, folks. We're talking about YouTube, how it can be a game changer for your business, as it has been for mine and so many of the agents that I work with. YouTube is a powerful, phenomenal platform that if you're not on at the moment, outside of you watching and consuming, so thank you so much. As a reminder, the like button is right down there. It's going to be a great little boost for this signal. Sends out notifications to the subscribers to let them know that we are live. If you're not on YouTube right now, outside of a user and consumer, you're doing yourself a disservice. So today, we're going to crush through any barriers. Today, we're going to get you on the platform. And this is the, this is how you as real estate agents, you as realtors, can effectively use YouTube in your marketing strategy. So you're going to see the entire breakdown on why YouTube. You're going to see the breakdown on how to actually make a video. And you're going to see the breakdown on how to increase your production, how to increase your video making production so it doesn't need to take you 5, 12, uh, uh, what, 24 hours. It doesn't need to take you all of that. You're going to be able to make videos that are watchable, that are entertaining in very, very quick fashion. So we're going to dig right in here. So as you're coming in, let me know in the comments section where you're listening from. And also remember, be generous with that like button because it really does help the YouTube algorithm and sends out the notifications of other subscribers that need this information. So if you know anybody that needs to be on YouTube and wants to learn this craft with you so you can have an accountability partner, a running buddy, then please invite them to this live stream. This is a great time to ask any questions because we're, um, we're covering this in very big detail or in great detail. All right, so what are we doing here? Let me make sure I know what I'm doing. So here we go. All right, so let's get started. YouTube A to Z, the complete guide to YouTube. So the master class on YouTube and how to use it effectively for your business. So our goals today, outside of addressing any questions that you might have, Houston, Texas, in the house. I appreciate you being here. We have um, our goals from A to Z is we have video making essentials. So we need to understand how to actually make some video. Goal number two is the video structure. A lot of the questions that come up is, Jaime, well, I don't know what I need to be saying in these videos. How do I structure it? When do I present the offer? What does that look like? So I'm going to break it all down for you today. The YouTube workflow. So if you remember my acronym that I've been using for the past several years in teaching this to so many different agents, you're going to be okay. As soon as you know the acronym, the shortcut, the actual way to scale, the actual way to increase your workflow, you're going to have no issue. And then scaling the right way. So giving you the blueprint on how to make videos quickly, but make videos that are watchable and consumable and ultimately will get you leads. That's what it's about, right? We want to get leads at the end of the day. YouTube may not be a, a platform that you want to be on, and it certainly may not be a hobby for you. So we are doing this with intentionality. Let me turn off my notifications. We're doing this with intentionality so we can actually get some business, right? So I absolutely love YouTube, but if I had the option of doing YouTube or something else, I would do something else because YouTube is not the, it's not the main core of what I do. I don't enjoy making the videos with, with a strong passion. I enjoy helping other people, so I use the videos to um, reach reach the masses and help people in that respect. But as far as YouTube, I'm using it as a vehicle to help the most amount of people that I can. <clears throat> All righty. All right, so why YouTube? We're going to breeze right through this. Two billion monthly users. To put this in perspective, that's twice the size of Instagram. So think about that. How many times have you been told, get on Instagram, get on Instagram, get on Instagram. Figure out these hashtags. Get the perfect images out there. How many times have you been told that? Well, what if I told you that YouTube was twice the size? <laughs> How incredible is that? So that's the opportunity that you have in front of you. It's a one and done model. As soon as you create a video once, you upload it to YouTube, it lives there forever. That's powerful. That's powerful because the 
input that you put in today, the hard work that you put in today is going to reward you a month from now, a year from now, 10 years from now. So that's how powerful it can be. It's an absolutely free platform. It is free. It doesn't matter if you upload one video an hour or one video a year, it's free. So you don't have to pay anybody to upload. And that video is being consumed at 80%, meaning all the online content content that's out there, video is being consumed 80% of the time. So of the content that's out there, 80% of it is in the form of video. I think that's the best way of saying it. So just realize that. Understand that the power of video is real. You've been told that it's being real, but now we have some statistics to back it up. Most importantly, that it works. YouTube absolutely works. You're going to see how that happens. I'm in Houston too. Hope is hope is well with you. Hope all is well with you. Yeah, absolutely. So here I'm in Dallas, Fort Worth, just a little bit south of Fort Worth. So um, uh, hopefully everybody has their power back on. Everybody is staying warm, staying safe. So many blessings and prayers being lifted. So really hope that everybody is safe. For Monday and Tuesday, I didn't have power. But thankfully, since Wednesday of today, I've had power. So praise God. But anyway, yeah. Um, really appreciate that. And um, all right, so let's keep going. Video making essentials. Here's the thing. We need to get away from the idea that if we need to do video, we need to buy the fancy equipment. You don't need the equipment. You don't need this lighting. You don't need that lighting. You don't need this audio. You don't need that camera. You don't need everything that you have going on. You just need to start. Everything that you need is in your pocket right now, which is your phone. Whether it's an Android or an iPhone, it doesn't matter. Both are going to work. Any phone is going to work that has a camera this day and age. So you have all that you need within your pocket at the moment. Mega, mega, mega YouTubers are still using iPhones to record, are still using Androids to record because that's their style. So your phone is all you need. What I'm giving you right now is a blueprint on how to use iPhone, but then also I'm gonna show you the the way that you upgrade your equipment, and you're gonna see that right now. So recording is so, so simple that all you have to do is turn the phone landscape horizontally, look into it right into the camera, and then speak up. Then share what you have to share. Educate people. That's the, That's as simple as it is. Now you can do this outside or you can do this in front of a window so you have natural light, which is the best type of light. It's not this light that you see, it's stage light. The natural light is the best thing. However, we understand that, well, I'll, I'll get into the lighting in a little bit, but that's all you need. You have everything that you need at the moment and you're off to the races and that's how you make a video. Now. As we start talking about upgrading, that's the that's where we start talking about taking your credit card out. You're starting off with the phone, and that's the reason I encourage every single real estate agent, every single realtor out there to use their phone because I don't want any friction, I don't want any excuses on not to get started. If you start th- uh, if you if you think you're going to start video when you buy that five thousand dollar camera, then you're wrong. Because one, it's going to take you a lot of time to research what five thousand dollar camera you're going to use. And then two, you're going to find another excuse. If you're using the camera as the excuse to get started, you're going to find another excuse the, the minute the camera arrives. Well, I don't know how to use it. So now I need to invest two more months on figuring out how to use this camera. Stop with the excuses. And I hate to sound so negative or just challenge you in such a way, but I think we need to hear it at this point. I think that we, we've created so many barriers to ourselves to actually starting to where we fail to act. And this could manifest itself in video making. This can manifest itself in sales calls. This can manifest itself in moving the bro- from a brokerage that you've been meaning to move from. So many d- different aspects of life. So anyway, we're going to continue going before I start philosophizing. Your microphone, that's your first upgrade. Your microphone is your first upgrade. You can do a desk microphone or let me backtrack. You can do a lapel mic, which clips onto your to your shirt or to your blouse, whatever you have on, and it's gonna pick up your audio. So a lapel mic is 20 bucks, it's inexpensive. Your next upgrade, if you're, once you're through with the lapel mic, is gonna be a desk mic. A desk mic is based off of a USB, so it connects into your computer, 
and you can record into it. The most common one that I used for years and years was the Blue Yeti, which was a phenomenal microphone. It's about a hundred bucks right now. It um it and everything is linked down below by the way, but it would just sit on my on my desk and I and I would speak. Then the next upgrade or a different form of audio is a, a boom mic. So this is what I have right now. It's kind of in the frame because I didn't adjust the, the audio before we got going, but that's okay. So it's going straight and it's looking at me straight. And hopefully the audio is coming across. Okay, so that's the upgrade. That's the progression. The first investment that you're gonna make in your channel and your video making is the audio. And that's what you're seeing there. Then the next upgrade. So notice that the cost is going to vary from 20 bucks to 500 bucks. Just depends on the mic that you want to get. Now the next upgrade is your lighting. So first you're going to go with the audio because that is the most important part of the video. Believe it or not, it's actually the audio. It's not the visual. It's not the video itself. It is the audio. If you have very staticky, uh, echoey audio, then the audience is not going to stick around much, much, much uh, very long at all. Even if you have the perfect imagery, if they just hear all this crumbling, rustling, all this static, then they're gonna bounce. It's just gonna happen. So the next upgrade is gonna be your lighting. Lighting is gonna provide that consistency to the viewer. So the moment they click on your thumbnail on your video, what do they expect? Now, for me, they expect this set, which has some lighting over here. This is my key light, and this is my, I don't know what this is called, my backfill light. I'm not that great with uh, lighting, as you can tell but you're expecting this. This is a look. This is what it's supposed to look like at this point. So you provide that familiarity and this is replicatable. I can record at 2 a.m. in the morning and I can record at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. It doesn't matter. I do not have to sit in front of the, uh, in front of the window anymore because I have my set. All right, so Arthur Realtor watching from the Philippines. Welcome. Art your realtor, sorry, Art your realtor. Carrie, how's it going? Carrie from Carrollton from my own st old stomping grounds. Good seeing you, my friend. Good seeing you. So check Carrie out. He is a phenomenal real estate agent here in the DFW area. So if you have any referrals out that way, Carrie is a great resource, a great agent that you need to that you need to know. That's lighting. Now let's get into the camera. Notice that camera is the last piece. Notice that the camera is the last piece. You don't have to go run out in, to Best Buy or log into Amazon to buy a $5,000 camera. That is the la camera is the last piece. So as an example, right now what I have is a Canon M50. That's about 700 bucks, depending on when you buy it. So 700 bucks is, for some of you may be thinking, what the heck, 700 bucks? No, well think about how much you paid for that phone. <laughs> so keep that in perspective. But at the end of the day, the camera does make a difference once you know how to use it, once you know how to apply it. But there's so much that you need to learn before you ever turn on a camera and invest in the camera that you can learn from the phone. So that's why I don't say, hey, go out there and get this camera because again, it's gonna cost more money. You're not gonna know how to use it most likely unless you're a camera enthusiast. And then three, you're not gonna know if it's even necessary depending on the videos that you make. So get in the reps first, understand your needs, understand what your microphone situation needs to be, what your lighting situation needs to be, and what your camera situation needs to be before you go out there and invest in a $10,000 set. Start with what's, what's in your pocket right now. You've already invested in the phone, so use it. So don't go out and invest $10,000 in a set because it's not going to work. Or let me phrase that. It's not the wisest way to do it. You may get it to work, but it's not the best way to enter into anything that you're doing. Alex, welcome, Alex. North Carolina. I'm sorry, California. Wow, I can't read today. <laughs> Northern California. Hope all is well, my friend. I appreciate you dropping by. So yeah, as you're coming in, a like button is going to go a long way. And also, where you're from, I'm very interested. So we have several countries already repping. We have several states already repping, so I appreciate you being here. So one of the questions that comes after we get into this, all right, so how do we get start? How, how do we get started? One is, the next question is, well, do I need to hire a videographer? Do I need to hire an editor? Do I need to hire a copywriter? What does my set need to look like? So many different questions that 
I just want to concentrate everybody's mind, everybody's wandering mind into these three types of videos. There's a few more, but I wanted to focus on three for us today. And it's the talking head video, the on location video or on the move video, and then the animated video. From the talking head video perspective, what you're seeing right now, me talking directly into the camera, that's the talking head video. That's a type of video that you make. And this is the easiest, most simplest video to make because you sit down, turn on some lighting, flip the, flip the camera on, make sure that the audio is up or the microphone is working and you're recording. This is the simplest way to make a video and this is where I want all of you to start because it's gonna really set the tone. It's gonna help you understand, all right, so how do I get better audio? How can I control the lighting a little bit more? How does the set, set need to look? Or what is the backdrop? It, you're, putting, you're putting the muscle to work. The reason we start with the talking head videos is because again, it's the simplest one to do. And you can effectively communicate with people. Now, if you go to on location video, meaning you're mobile, you go to the house to do a video. You go to the house to do a listing video. You go to a business to showcase a business. Well, the moment that you go on location, the moment that you go anywhere, you're introducing so many different variables that you do not need. You're introducing, heck, how am I going to get two audio recordings from, from this? How am I going to get, if you go to a business as an example, and you're going to showcase a business, and it's a phenomenal strategy. Don't knock, I, I'm not knocking it. I'm just giving you some perspective because you may be hearing from other individuals, including myself, that's fair. Hey, go out and interview a business owner. Well, have you really thought about what it entails to record somebody else? Do you know that you're gonna need two microphones? Do you know that you're gonna need two battery packs that actually records the audio? Did you know that? Did you know that you're most likely looking at two cameras so you can get both perspectives? Do you know the depth? So you do, do you know how far you need to you need to go? Do you know how to block out or the the image or how to frame it correctly? So many different things go into the on location videos. I'm not trying to scare you or dissuade you from doing on location videos. I think on location videos are phenomenal. Um, but at the end of the day, we need a starting point. So once you understand lighting, once you understand a little bit of camera, once you understand the audio situation, yeah, then let's go do a vlog. Yeah, now let's go over and interview the business owner that I've been wanting to interview. That's when you introduce it. Not That's not where you start. So if I had started with on location videos, I would have given up. I just would have. There's so many different things that go into it that you don't even think about. So the sun, well, that's going to be radiating. And you know now we could use it because it's 30 degrees here. But it's going to be radiating. So do you know how to reduce that harshness? So it doesn't impact. So it doesn't look like you're just completely like they're like your viewers are looking into the sun. So we need to be aware of this, right? So we need to understand this. And if this is making sense, let me know. Let me know if um, if there's any questions. I absolutely appreciate you being here. I respect your time. We are making some great time, and I hope that you're finding value in this. If there's any questions, please feel free to drop them down below. Thanks, sir. Hey, I appreciate you. Ar Arsalan, appreciate you. Arsalan, watching from South Asia, Pakistan. Look at you. It um, I think you're 10 hours ahead of me. So kudos to you. I appreciate you. Wow, never thought of that. Yeah, it's something that um, I didn't think about it until I tried to do it either. So that's, that's something that happens. But anyway, on location videos, just to understand the pros and cons. I love the, them being dynamic. I love the fact that you're able to present and share a different story, but understand that it's going to take you a little bit longer to learn and it's going to take you a little bit longer to get a video out. So there's a difference between me just recording right here and telling you what the option period is versus me trying to go find a house and making sure that the, that the iPhone is mounted just right and the echoey in the house, the echoes in the house aren't so bad. And then I talk to you about the option period. There's a difference. All right, so animated animated videos are a little bit more expensive. So this means that think of 
animated like explainer videos, those animated caricature types of videos that explain a explain a process or educating a process. So animated videos take more time to do and cost more because chances are you don't know how to do animations. Not a knock on you, I don't, and very few people do. So then you're having to hire somebody to do the animation for you. You have to either do the voiceover yourself or hire somebody else to do the voiceover for you. There's a lot more things that are involved. So this is very rare. This is more for product-based or service-based ads. Um, it's not necessarily a strategy that you can deploy in a huge, in a huge, um, a, a, a lot quicker. It's just not a way that you can do that. All right. So now that we've talked about what it actually takes to make a video, we talked about the different styles of video making. Now we get into the actual meat and potatoes of it. Now this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we actually go into production mode. How does a video go from an idea into YouTube? How do we actually get it there? And I want you to remember two things. Number one, the acronym that you see on the screen right now, which is BOSS RED. B-O-S-R-E-D, brainstorm, optimize, script, record, edit, and distribute. And if you can remember this acronym, I'll repeat it one more time, BOSS RED, B-O-S-R-E-D, brainstorm, optimize, script, record, edit, and distribute. And if you can articulate it just as fast as I can, you have a amazing future ahead of you. You have an amazing future ahead of you as a YouTuber. So this is the process that I have. The process itself is not one that I coined, but the acronym is one that I have. So Boss Red is the, is the acronym that I coined, that I developed. This is the same one that if you go to my Trello board, which is my project management system, or the one that I use, it's not actually mine, but there I have everything labeled just like as you see right here. So brainstorm, optimize, script, record, edit, and distribute. So that's the one thing that I want you to remember. But the second thing that I mentioned was this this whole YouTube ecosystem, this whole video making ecosystem is driven forward under the concept of batching. Batching meaning you're making multiple videos at once. <clears throat> you're making multiple videos instead of making one video all the way through. So you thinking about it, you scripting it, you recording, you editing, and then you upload. And then you start all over again with another video. If you're doing it one by one, you're wasting your time. It sounds harsh, but you are. If you're doing one video all the way through, and then you're going to do another video all the way through, you're wasting your time. And this is, and I say this because I care. I say this because I want you to stop it. I say this because there's a better way. You want to avoid burnout. Burnout is a real thing. I've been doing daily videos. I think at this point I started in September of 2019. So however long that is going on a year and three months or something like that. So I've been doing daily videos since then and burnout is real. So here's the concept. It's batching. So you're making multiple videos at once. All the successful YouTubers do that. Doesn't matter if you're looking at PewDiePie. Doesn't matter if you're looking at Mr. Beast. Doesn't matter if you're looking at Mark Rober. All of these big YouTubers, they have multiple videos going on at once. So when you're batching, here's what's happening. You are looking at all these stages that you see, Boss Red, B-O-S-R-E-D. You're looking at every single one as a stage. You can look at them as a bucket if you want. And what this means is you're, you have multiple things, multiple videos going on in these buckets at once. So here's what happens. So brainstorming, you're going to brainstorm five different topics or five different videos that you want to get out there. So you can brainstorm on Evernote. You can brainstorm on an Excel document. You can brainstorm on Trello. That's what I use personally. You can brainstorm on a notepad. It doesn't matter. You're basically coming up with ideas on topics or videos that you want to make. That's what you're brainstorming. That's what you are creating. So you're going to sit down, carve out 15 minutes and brainstorm. What next five videos do I want to get out? 
and you're gonna brainstorm as many as you as many ideas as you can, but ultimately you're gonna settle on five. So we're gonna continue going. Now you get to the optimization phase. So you now that you have your five videos, or your five topics, your five ideas that you wanna expand upon, now you get over to the optimization phase. Those five ideas turn into a reality. This is where you start looking at the title. This is where you start considering the thumbnail. So you're optimizing your idea and looking to see, hey, is anybody even looking for this type of information? Is there search volume? Is there competition here? What is everybody else doing? How can I be different? Now, what, how do I need to phrase my, my title so where it actually ranks and where it actually has a chance of being found? I'll give you an example. If you had a listing video and you wanted to showcase it because you want to sell it, obviously. Well, the worst thing that you can do is put the address as a title because nobody cares about the address. Nobody cares about the address. Nobody is searching for that address. What they're searching for is a home that's under $400,000 in the Highland Park community. So that is, do you see the difference of me putting the title versus me putting um, home under $400,000 in Highland Park? Just to give you a perspective, Highland Park, I believe the medium price range there is like $900,000. So you're not gonna find that. It's gonna be a lot basically. But it gives you, it. I want you to understand the difference and this is what happens in the optimization phase. So you're using extensions like TubeBuddy, vidIQ, keywords everywhere. Everything is linked down below. So just make sure to check that out. And yes, many of these are affiliates. So I want to make sure that I'm transparent as I'm, as I'm saying that. But these are, all of them with the exception of keywords everywhere, have a free plan. And free plans work just fine. Just so you know what I have, I actually have the legend plan on TubeBuddy, which is the highest tier one that you can do. But you don't need that. You don't need, I'm not saying go and spend money. TubeBuddy and BitIQ are extensions that you add to your channel so you can do some keyword research, so you can see your competition, so you can see different volumes of, of searches and gives you some good ideas on how to optimize your videos. Keywords Everywhere gives you the search volume. It gives you the, hey, how much traffic, how many people are asking for this type of information? How many people are asking for a Dallas real estate agent? It gives you that volume. And the cost on that is like 10 bucks. I, it's it's minuscule, it's, it's worth it, it just is. But anyway, so this is, how, this is where you start optimizing your videos and start refining your ideas. And most important thing is your title. And the second most important thing that you're optimizing here for is your thumbnail. How is your title going to work together with the thumbnail? So at this point, you will have already in your mind, you know what the thumbnail is going to look like and you know what the title is going to look like. So this is where you square those together and ideally you go ahead and create your thumbnail or you have somebody, a designer, do the thumbnail for you. And there's plenty of them out there. If you're interested in finding some high quality virtual assistants that do that for you, then just go to JaimeResendez.com, so my name, forward slash VA. So JaimeResendez.com forward slash VA. And that's where um, that's where you can find some great VAs that are going to help you. All right, so now we get to scripting. So what we've gone through is brainstorm. So the B, O, optimize. And then now we're getting to the S of the Boss Red acronym. So now we're scripting. You can script word by word or you can do bullet points. As an example, I do bullet points. In all of my videos, I have bullet points that I wanna cover, and then I hit them. So I have my bullet points listed out over here. Hey, I'm gonna talk about the option period. Um, okay, so I kinda of wanna cover that. All right, this is the option period. And if I screw up, who cares? I just do it again, I just do it again. Everything is gonna be in one file. It's not gonna be in one take, but it's gonna be in one file. So I never turn off the camera. I'm gonna look over here. Um, what is the earnest period, or what is what's what's earnest money? Um, and as you know, everybody needs to blah blah blah. So whatever it happens to be, whatever I'm sharing. But I, as soon as I get nail my shot, perfect. Go to the next point. 
So you can do a script if you want, or you can do a bullet point. Like I mentioned that example, it was me doing bullet points. But if you do a script and you're writing everything out, there's a lot of apps that have um, a teleprompter on them, meaning it'll actually scroll with you as you read through it. So the phone would be up here and then you're speaking and you're reading. So you're reading and speaking basically. <laughs> and um, so that's another way of doing it. If you don't feel comfortable doing bullet points, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. I prefer to do bullet points because it comes a little bit more organic and it doesn't come across as I'm reading a script. All righty. Can you tell me about sound recorders that we can use to make videos? I wish I could, Arsalan. I just don't use sound recorders. Now, a good person to follow on audio and video alike would be Trevor Jones. So his name is Trevor Jones, creator. If you search him up on YouTube, he's actually been on this channel before. He's phenomenal at getting you the gear. That's how I started. One video at a time, I need to implement the batching process gonna go so much faster it's gonna be go so much faster all right so now that we know a little bit about you know the scripting if you will, I want to give you the structure of a video that's gonna get views so we have the hook the hook is where you bring people into the video you tell people what the video is about and you give them a reason to stay to the end so those do those three make sense you hook people into the video you share what the video is about and you give people a reason to stick to the end. Hence the word hook. So that's what you're doing here. Now, then you go immediate, immediately into a brief intro, and I mean super brief, less than five seconds is all you need. People do not need a 30 second commercial of who you are. They don't, they don't care. They want the information. So you're just gonna do a brief intro. Hey, I'm Jaime Resendez with eXp Realty, and in this channel I talk about home buying and home selling. That's it. So you just do a brief intro and then you're, you continue moving. And then you go into, really I need to change this because it, it's, um, I call it the bumper sometimes, I call it the buffer sometimes, I call it the bridge sometimes. If by the next time, if you, if you go to another presentation of mine, you're probably gonna see, you're gonna see this word change, but this is meant to be the bumper between the intro and the first point. So you're connecting, so that's why I call it the bridge sometimes. You're connecting the from the intro to the first point. And in that bumper, what you're doing is you're resharing, you're retelling, you're recanting what the video is going to be about and connect with people. So why this is important. Hey, this is why you need to understand what the home buying process is like because you can lose a lot of money if you have no idea, people will look to take advantage of you. And here are the three reasons why that happens, whatever it happens to be, right? So you're creating that from the intro, you're bringing it into the points. So point one, point two, point three. So the value, value, value that you have, and it could be more than three points, obviously, but just giving you the structure. So this is the content and then you deliver on the hook. So remember what happened in the hook. You brought people into the video with with the hook you brought people into the video you gave them what the video was going to be about and then you gave them a reason to stay to the end it could be a surprise it could be a cheat a, a cheat sheet it could be whatever you want to say at the beginning but hey make sure to stay to the end to find out my most important point in the world whatever happens to me it doesn't matter it's just you're giving people a reason to stay to the end and right before the end you deliver on the hook you deliver what you promised at the beginning. Now, don't promise something at the beginning and then not deliver. <laughs> that would, that's that's gonna quickly get you people unsubscribing. So deliver something of, of mystery, something of value to stay to the end and then make sure that you deliver. And then you just sign off, just bounce. Now avoid using words like, and final, like if you're on here, bullet point three. And finally, the last point that I wanna share with you today is that people will fraudulently try to get your credit card information. Well, you just told them the last point. They have no reason to stay to the end now. So if you use words like finally, lastly, those type of words, or in conclusion, another is, is another word, you're gonna find in your analytics that if you use those words right at that point, 
and you may have an entire minute left on that video, you're gonna find that your watch retention rate goes, it falls off a cliff. Because you let them know that it's about to end. And the moment that you share what the third point was, and not allow it, they won't allow you to elaborate there forward because they know the three points now. Okay, I have all the value that I needed from this video. So just avoid those words and sign off quickly. Dan, I use a Zoom Handy H1N. It works pretty good. It's relatively affordable. Hey, thanks so much, Dan. Dan is a great real estate agent and YouTuber out there. So go follow his channel. He provides some great information. He's out of the Florida market. Send referrals his way. All right, so where can I find that recorder? Dan, I bought an Amazon. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. I'll order for it now. I'll order it right now. Awesome. Great. So I'm glad that you're collaborating, communicating. Y'all are awesome. Appreciate y'all. All right, so this is more about the script. So let me know if this is making sense. So what we've just gone through is the first half, the preparation phase before we press record. So I need to pause here for a quick second because we as real estate agents and we as action takers, we hear make video and we're thinking, yeah, let's make video. And we just turn on the camera or we turn on the, the phone and then we freeze. Oh crap, what do I say? What happens now? Uh, and then we just get into the BS mode, right? So we just start BSing, if you will. Um, and yeah, this is also why it's important to, to buy with me because I wear jeans. I don't know. Whatever, whatever, you're, whatever you say, um, record. And, and the reason I, I make uh, I, I make a distinction, a pause here for a second, is because notice that if you jump straight into the recording phase, you missed out on the preparation phase. And you can see that the preparation phase is there for a reason: brainstorming, optimizing, and scripting before you get to the recording phase. If you start at the recording phase. If you notice the acronym, the way that it's read, so the way that it reads is R-E-D, red, you operate in the red zone, meaning that you're operating always in overdrive. And you're gonna get burned out. So think of your car, the um, that little gauge that as you start revving the engine, if you will, you see that the RPMs just go into the red very quickly. And if you only operate from recording, editing, distributing, and never prepare, you're always operating in the red. Pretty clever, right? So <laughs> that's um so that's why I that's why I I present the acronym the way that I do. Boss red, brainstorm, optimize. So that's boss and then red. So if you always operate from recording, editing, and distributing, you're gonna get burned out. You're not operating, watch how I connect this, as a boss. Right? You're not operating as an actual boss that is thinking ahead. You're not operating as somebody that is in control of their business. You're not operating somebody that's in control of their future. You're operating always on the red zone. You're always operating on the overdrive and you're gonna get burned out. You're not gonna scale. It's just not gonna be a sustainable way to leave a legacy. So you're not operating as a true owner, as a true boss of your business. So that's the true meaning of boss red. So the boss red, the acronym, that's, you're gonna, you need to operate as a boss first before you actually go over into the R-E-D. Alrighty, so recording. Here, when it comes to recording, since you're gonna be doing different types of videos, I'm gonna go and share the, um, just a few tips here. You need to bring energy. You just have to. The camera or the phone, it's gonna drop the energy. So you need to bring it up just a bit. Don't be inauthentic, be yourself. But you need to bring some energy. Test your equipment. This is so cool because when you're batching, you have to test your equipment once and then you record five videos after that. You don't have to record, you don't have to test your equipment five different times because you will have already done that at the beginning. And then you make your five videos and you're done. Prepare. And when I say prepare, I mean prepare to be on camera. Prepare to, to deliver. You're an actor at this point. You are a performer at this point. So prepare with that mindset, right? 
Look into the lens. This happens all the time, especially if you're using phones. You're used to looking at the actual yourself over here as opposed to looking at the lens or the camera. So make sure that you look into the camera because people want to see you. They want, they want to know that you're speaking with them. If you're over here reading a script and are very scripted and are very robotic and you're thinking that you're connecting with people, you're not. You're just not. All right, and then enjoy it. If it's going to be a good video, great. If it's going to be a terrible video, who cares? Enjoy it. You're making it anyway. So might as well have fun with it. Editing. Once your video is complete, you have a file. And that file needs to be touched up. I don't care if you're the best speaker in the world or the worst speaker in the world. You're going to need some editing. I used to not, for the first 50 videos or so, I did not edit my videos. And it wasn't because I was a very gifted speaker, as you can clearly see that I'm not. It was because I didn't know how to edit. <laughs> so I would go through and just blast through a video and just, you know, pray to God that I didn't mess up on minute six on whatever point I was trying to make because I was not going to edit. I refused to. And I have stories on this where if you look at my social media, I have stories where I'm, hey, I'm just I'm going to refuse to edit. There's um, there's two things. There's two things in this world that I refuse to do. Or uh, there's two pet peeves in the world. One is when people would interrupt me when I was recording. So when I had uh, when I was in in, an, in my office, people would barge in. So that was my number one pet peeve. My number two pet peeve was people that threw cigarette butts out the window. <laughs> so those were my two pet peeves. And um, if you if you look back at my um, I think I put it on Facebook and on Instagram. That that was very documented. But when it comes to editing, once you have your file ready to go, start with your computer default. So meaning the computer that you buy, doesn't matter which, will have an editing software already there. So just use whatever is there. Don't invest in all this other stuff until you're ready, until you are ready to make that upgrade. So the Mac has Final Cut Pro, which is my preferred, and I have a Mac, by the way. And then the PC has Premiere. So these are the two foremost authorities when it comes to editing. Now, if you want an easy video editor, I'll go ahead and, and link it down below as well. Um, InVideo.io is a fantastic tool that you can use that kind of bridges the gap between these, what you see on the right-hand side and then what you see on the left-hand side. All right, so now that we've gone through BOS, RE, now we get to the D, which is distribute. Now we upload it to YouTube. Now we upload it to YouTube, and then we're going to organically share that to our social media. So that means that whenever you upload it to YouTube, you are going to also upload that video itself onto Facebook, and then in the comment section, you're going to put the URL. So let me rephrase that. Maybe not rephrase it, just repeat that. You're going to upload the video to YouTube, so you have it there. And you're going to upload the video to Facebook as well, organically. Organically, so natively is what it's called as well. And you're going to take that URL that you get over here, and you're going to put it in the comment section. Do not do a direct link. Do not do that. And I fall guilty to this all the time. So until... The only reason that I did that was because I was doing daily videos, doing the direct linking, but I've gotten out of that habit. So I have now my VAs take over that. So it's something I didn't want to do. I didn't want to upload it myself and then link it. So now my VAs have that responsibility. So it's been working well. And when you upload a video, this is what it looks like. You upload the video over here. Well, this is the same screen. It's just, I just scroll down over here. You're going to have the title already ready to go. You're going to have the thumbnail by because you went through the optimization phase. You created your thumbnail. So you upload a custom thumbnail. Don't use the default ones. As you can see here, these are the defaults, which look terrible. So you're going to edit your title, edit your description. And if you can see here, this is the continual of the description. You're going to add it to a playlist. So create a playlist about if you're talking about home buyers, home sellers, neighborhoods, different topics, you're going to create playlists that is going to help you out a ton. It's going to help the users from a user experience. It's going to help you from an SEO perspective. And then over here from visibility, you're going to see 
where you're going to see three, well, four different options. One is private, meaning only you can see it. Two is unlisted, which means it's in Facebook. I'm sorry, it's uh, unlisted. It's in YouTube. And that link that you share right there, you can share it with somebody else and they're going to see it. It's not private. It's just unlisted. The front facing of the people on Facebook will not be able to find it organically unless they have the link exactly or the exact link. And then three is public. So public is when you make it public, it's ready to it's ready to be shown on your channel and it shows on your channel. So other people can see it. And then four is premiere. Premiere is almost like what you see with these these lives where I schedule them ahead of time. You can premiere a video that you upload. So you upload a video and you premiere it on Monday at 9 a.m. Central. So instead of doing this live with you, I could have recorded this without you being present and I would premiere it on Friday at 9 a.m. Central. But I don't like doing it that way. I don't think that it really helps with the algorithm anyway. But when you premiere it, even though it's recorded, I can still be interacting with you as if it was a real thing. So I could try to lie to you, <laughs> but that's not worth it. All righty. All right, so let me know if there's any questions down below. We, um, I'd love to engage with you in any questions that come up. Now, the last two things over here on this screen, so the last two things to consider when you're distributing, the end screen. The end screen is the last 20 seconds of the video. So the last 20 seconds of the video are where you embed some additional features, where you, I'm sorry, where you embed whatever you want, whether it's other videos, other playlists, the subscribe button. So you typically see people signing off and you see me signing off. Um, well, now that you know everything that you need to know about YouTube, it's time to get back to business. So I'll leave a video right here that's gonna help you do that. And I'm pointing to the sky, Nobody, nothing is here, obviously. I put that in the end screen. Um, now you have everything that you need, I'm gonna, you need to get back to business, whatever. And I'm gonna leave a video right here. And I even forget my outro now. <laughs> it's the pressure of doing live. So anyway, um, I point over here and then I remind people to subscribe and then I just bounce, right? So um, the reason that I make it a point to include an in screen is because I'm inviting you to check out another video. And that is gonna increase the chances that you're gonna take me up on the offer and you're gonna click on that video there. And then I put the another video that I think is relevant and then a subscribe link somewhere down here. So that's the end screen. And cards, cards are where, you know when people are, are talking about another video that they've made, it's like, today we're gonna talk about X, Y, and Z, but remember that we talked about A, B, C in this video right here. So I'm gonna link it up so you can check that video out after me. So those are cards. And you can put five individual cards in every single video. So just give you a heads up on that. Where's the best place to find video editor? How about finding great thumbnail graphic artists? HaimeRescendis.com slash VA. You're going to find the, the best community of freelancers that I have found. The people that I use for, um, for my editing, that's where I have them. That's where I found them. People that I use for my VAs, that's where I, I, I found them. Now, if you want to use something a little bit different, so my thumbnail, so actually, actually, you know what? My thumbnails, I actually got through Fiverr. So Fiverr is where I found my thumbnail person. He was incredible. I was actually his first review. Um, I found him that early. And um, I think now he's got 300 five-star reviews. He's got all of them are five-star. And if you're interested in that information, just DM me and I'll get that to you. But yeah, so Fiverr is another resource. Upwork is another resource. But again, my preferred, my go-to is HaimeRescendis.com forward slash VA. All right, so where are we? Where's the best place to find videos? How about finding a great thumbnail graphic artist? So Fiverr would be cool. Great video. Do you have templates for YouTube's and Facebook sellers? Also want to target investors and would like it at template. Um, I don't have templates for that. I don't have templates for that. I am dropping a course soon on YouTube and I'll probably include them there. Nice. Thanks. Awesome. 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 Great question, Reggie. I just don't have, I just don't have that. Alrighty. So here we go. What's next? 
create your YouTube channel. Many of you already have them. Many of you don't remember the login, and that's okay. But the call to action at this point in time, the Great Commission, if you will, outside of the original Great Commission, which is the true Great Commission, um, what you're responsible for now is going and creating your YouTube channel and going out there and putting this into practice. And I appreciate you spending the time here. I appreciate you hitting the like button. I appreciate the questions. But if you leave this here and fail to act, then you just you just learn some pretty cool stuff and you're going to be able to speak it. But, you're, but if you're not acting on it, then people are not going to call you. People are not going to email you. People are not going to DM you ready, willing, and able to do business with you. There's going to be zero types of leads out there that are easier to convert than YouTube leads. So let me repeat that. The easiest leads to convert on the face of the earth, on, the, on this planet, are YouTube leads. And this is even supersedes your family. YouTube leads are ready, willing, and able to do business with you the moment that they call you. They're not going to negotiate. They're not going to negotiate commission with you. They're not going to, well, I'm interviewing you and X, Y, and Z. That's not going to happen. They're calling you because they're ready, willing, and able to go. They're ready, willing, and able to act. That's why they called you. Because they know everything about you already. They saw your video on options, on the option period. They saw your video on the top neighborhoods. They saw your video on moving to X, Y, and Z city. They saw X, Y, and Z video. So they're ready to go. They're ready to act. So now it's your responsibility to show them a home or sell their home. It's up to you. So go out there, create that YouTube channel. I'm going to go through here. Uh, paid YouTube ads versus Google's. YouTube ads. YouTube ads. Uh, paid YouTube ads versus Google ads. What's giving you better results? YouTube ads. Yep, it's that simple. YouTube ads. So you just need to know what you're doing, and you're going to be converting like no other. It is, it is a game changer. Folks, I appreciate your time here, and I appreciate all those like buttons that are going through the screen right now. I really see them, so I appreciate the time that you spent with me today. This has been YouTube for Real Estate Agents, YouTube Mastery for Realtors. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down in the comment section down below. If I can be of assistance in any way, you know how to connect with me. Um, actually, I'll leave my little thing right here. Go ahead and um, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. That's the best way to connect in the DMs. If I can be of service down the road, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great weekend.